In this short video, we're going to look at two new improvements in Maya 2017 Update 3 to the rigging process. The first one is a new deformer that I will show on this character here. You see that the character is not yet skinned. So I'm going to take the skeleton plus the geometry, go into the skinning menu, bind skin, and I will use the geodesic voxel binding with all default settings and bind the skin here. When I take the arm of the character and, and rotate that arm up, you will see that we have some quite a lot surface stretching here. So this is the arm itself. I go up the hierarchy and rotate the collarbone. You, you just see that's more stretching and then the chest bone. Ah, oh, that's a lot of, lot of stretching that we have here. So I'm trying to make this better. So let's undo that or let's go to the bind back to the bind pose and grab the geometry. And with this geometry, I will apply a new deformer called the tension deformer. The tension deformer simulates some sort of a surface that has a stiffness or so and tries to maintain the size of the facets. So now when I when I rotate the arm up and then the collarbone and then the chest bone, you see that we have a lot less tearing of these surfaces. So it, the surface is actually stretched in the direction of the movement. So in this case, up the arm here. So here on the right side, we can tell we can have a look at the tension deformer. So maybe I'll increase the iterations a bit to make it even better. So now when I when I take the envelope value and I decrease envelope to turn off the tension deformer, you see that was the result before. So that was the, the amount of tearing of facets were torn apart. And this is the result with the tension deformer. I can also select the geometry and go into the tension deformer. So this is the result without, and this is the result with the tension deformer. You see, that's a big improvement. Of course, for some customers, that's not very, not very helpful for games customers, for example they can't use the tension deformer. The one thing is, you know, the source code, you need the source code, but the other one is also the performance in the games engine. Such a calculation costs a lot of CPU cycles and that, of course, we, we try to avoid that. The other improvement that I'd like to talk about is the fact that we now have something or we have a way to bake these results into a skin cluster deformer. So what I'm going to do now is to move this character to the side and turn on another character that we have here. And the other, this other character is also not yet skinned. So I'm, and I, I would go now and transfer the weights of this skin here over to this character and this skeleton, but the weights with all the effects that the deformer has on this area here on the surface. So let's have a look. So. In order to call this tool, I have to, to run a command. So in the user interface, you will not yet find this tool here. That's the bake deformer tool. You simply write this command into your script editor and hit the enter key on the numeric keyboard. And then this little tool window opens and I'm going to remove these settings here that are already in there and we'll now show you how to popul populate these values. So you go into your source geometry, that's the leather suit that I'm coming from. So all the weights that are on this object here, I want to use for my, for my bake operation. And this is the source skeleton. I'm simply using the middle mouse button, drag and drop mechanism. And then for the target, that's this one here. So the leather suit on the other character and also the target shooter skeleton dropped inside here. The number of influences that will be on this skeleton here will be five. You can adjust that. And then you hit apply. And now watch the red character, what, what the red character is doing. The, this tool rotates all of the bones of the character and measures the displacement of all of the vertices and then bakes that into the new skin deformer. And that way you get a very similar result to what you have, what you can achieve with all these deformers. So it's going to be finished in a second. And then we'll have a look at the, at the results here. So when I take this arm now here and, and rotate the arm up, you see, oh, wow, that's pretty good. So look at these deformations. That's very, very good. Oh, actually, you know, we can compare them side by side. I'd simply take this character here and use my move tool and move him very close to the other character. And now we have a look side by side 
for the two characters. So I, I pick both arms, take the rotate tool and rotate both arms up. And you see already, wow, this is really close. I'm going to go up to the collarbone and I'm going to go up to the chest bone and move them up. And now this is, you know, I can now go to the other character and take this character here and go to the tension deformer and turn the tension deformer off. Now look at this. This was the result before. This is what you get when you don't have the tension deformer and this is with the tension deformer. And here it's only a skin cluster. So this character was just done with the skin cluster. You see there's no tension deformer in here in the construction history, which means we've very effectively bake the effects of the tension deformer into a simple skin cluster so that you can use this second character here in your games engine because it's only a smooth bound skin cluster. Very cool way to you know take your results of a complex deformer rig and bake that into a skin cluster in Maya 2017 update 3.